Good afternoon. Welcome to Webinar Wednesdays with RPI Consultants. Today we're doing our Perceptive Content 7.2.3 and Learn Mode updates. Just a few housekeeping items. We do these uh, webinars first Wednesday of each month. Um, we have some folks available in the background to take questions throughout the webinar that we'll address afterwards. And uh, be sure to stay tuned for our Yoga Link webinar after this one. So on today's agenda, we're going to cover a little bit about RPI, uh, Perceptive Content 7.2.3 updates, Learn Mode enhancements, and the updates to Content Apps 2.4. My name is Chad Tucker. I'm a manager of solution engineering at RPI Consultants. I used to be a system administrator for a hospital. Um, today at RPI, I'm responsible for designing and scoping our custom solutions, and I am a marine veteran. My name is Sean Levante. I'm a project coordinator with RPI. I'm responsible for managing uh, the scope, budget, timeline uh, for multiple client projects, and I'm still Kansas City's most eligible branch. Today. Just a little bit about uh, RPI consultants. We have over 80 consultants, project managers, technical architects across our offices located in Baltimore, Tampa, and Kansas City. Uh, we provide software consulting services for Infor Lawson, Perceptive Content, OnBase, Brainware, Kofax, uh, suite of products. Um, we are a partner with Highland and an authorized solution and service provider for both Perceptive Content and OnBase. We do everything from invitations, upgrades, health checks, custom integrations, and development. So first we're going to cover the Perceptive Content uh, 7.2.3 updates. Uh, most notably, we'll start off here with uh, the technical architecture, uh, looking at database support. Um, the updates include uh, Microsoft's uh, SQL Server 2017 compatibility, um, Oracle uh, 12CR2, um, that way you can take advantage of uh, new security enhancements and Postgres. Um, another architecture update uh, would be for uh, RabbitMQ, which allows for um, a higher level of security enhancements surrounding TLS with Java. Um, Pivotal, the maker of RabbitMQ, has also announced that uh, 3.6, uh, the version 3.6, will be nearing its end of life cycle here shortly. Um, so it's great that we're now including a 3.7 message broker support. Uh, continue. Um, we're also looking at uh, Tomcat 9 web server support for the versions of 7.2.3, 7.2.2, 1.5, and it's going to utilize uh, Java 8 or greater. Also, uh, the file conversion service has been upgraded to version uh, 4.2.1. Uh, this is going to be a prerequisite for Experience Content Apps 2.4. And we're going to be utilizing uh, a new call enhancement. Uh, this will be using a stateless API Im image rendering uh, process. Uh, previously, there was a two-call method to render images. Um, this would definitely cause some slowness. So now we're removing uh, integration server dependency for rendering images um, to uh, speed up the process here a little bit. We've also included a status resource addition uh, for just checking uh, the overall status of FCS. Uh, sometimes there can be a little bit of confusion around these acronyms, FCS and FCC. Um, file conversion service and file conversion component are two separate entities. Um, FCS is all about rendering images in the client, while FCC converts files to uh, different image formats in ImageNow. Also, we want to go over uh, a couple of the notable server updates um, with integration server. Um, this is really specifically towards uh, status monitoring. So now you're going to be able to uh, look at uh, your server up or down uh, status. Um, we provided an XML example here so you can see what that looks like. Um, one of the biggest points here to, to call out is you can now do this without providing credentials uh, to a REST call. So this is going to be convenient for integrating with uh, web-based monitoring tools. And I've also included the 7.2.3 release notes on this line uh, for reference material. Later on, make sure to check this out after the webinar. I'm going to pop in with a question here real quick. Uh, a couple slides back, you'd mentioned um, Java or support for Java version 8. Um, is that, uh, the question was, will Java version 8 be needed for the client or only for server use? The Java version 8 is as it relates to um, Apache Tomcat and what's supported by Apache Tomcat, not necessarily the webinar client. 
Okay. Um, next, we want to cover uh, a new functionality here, a new feature added an upgrade, uh, which is the ability to email experience URL links uh, to documents uh, utilizing a new method seen here with the experience URL. Uh, previously, you could uh, only do this in the WebNow thick client links. Um, now you can send the URL uh, based on a drawer, a drawer and a doc type. Uh, this is all configured within the INI uh, that we'll show here in the next slide. Um, also note that Highland is making an effort to make uh, receptor content 7.2.2 uh, compatible with uh, 7.2.3, but this feature right here is only compatible with 7.2.3. Right, and this is as it pertains to the client version. So you could have a Perceptus 7.2.2 uh, thick client with a 7.2.3 server installation. However, you would not be able to utilize this new experience URL functionality. So here's an example of the INI uh, configuration where you can uh, you know, configure based on the drawer, uh, drawer and doc type that we mentioned earlier. Give that a moment. Good. All right. Uh, I believe Chad can provide a, uh, a use case for uh, the default configuration. So an example may be here if you're going to email a link to an AP invoice document, you may want to configure the user experience. Uh, for uh, that content apps link to maybe include an e-form so you can show the GL coding lines of an invoice. Um, maybe there's a different user experience use case for something other than an invoice where um, you, know, you don't want to show a form, you don't want to show the properties, you just want to show um, the image and what they can do with the image, export it, download it, route it forward, uh, things like that. So this just allows you to tailor that user experience based on drawer document type for different areas of the business that are using um, perceptive experience. So next, uh, I'd like to cover the learn mode enhancements included here lately. Um, we need to go over that uh, this new integration functionality was released in May 2018 uh, for patches specifically at 7.2.2443 and 7.1.5.1899. Now, uh, within the release notes, this does uh, specifically talk about integration with uh, Aleutian Banner 9 and Colleague UI 5. Um, utilizing uh, these methods of app get data and app get tree. App get tree is the new method that they're going to be utilizing. Um, so previously, you had to make multiple calls uh, for all the data in a in a web page, and with shifting values, uh, this can cause slowness. So with the app get tree method, you can now pull all that data in one single call, definitely speeding up your process here. Um, so any web-based ERPs can now use this method to speed up learn modes. Um, for example, Lawson, JD Edwards, or PeopleSoft. Uh, and of course, if you're looking to continue and further improve your indexing capabilities, make sure to stick around for our, our yoga webinar after this, or later this afternoon. Great, now we're going to talk about the updates to Perceptive Experience Content Apps uh, version 2.4. Um, 2.4 was released alongside of ImageNow 7.2.3. Uh, most information talking about here can be found in the um, release notes, which is on docs.highland.com under Perceptive Experience Content Apps. Um, the enhancements are to the, the different modules within Content Apps. So you have your Documents module, your Document Viewer, and your Workflow components. Um, some UI enhancements and some enhancements to the performance based on the way that they're caching uh, data for frequently used uh, calls. So things like uh, drawers, user security, um, if those are changed, you'd have to relaunch the client um, to refresh those values. Um, one of the most significant updates on the documents module um, and the workflow module is the public and private filters. Um, so now within Perceptive Experience, you can see both prompted and unprompted public and private filters. So we got a screenshot of what this looks like today. Um, here you have an example of a prompted date filter in perceptive experience on a document view. And then here we have uh, what private views look like. So here on the left we have a screenshot of the inside of perceptive content, what a private filter looks like, and then inside of perceptive experience, what a private filter looks like. Um, 
in, in the thick line, you can see it kind of draws a distinction between what's a public and a private filter, but you kind of don't have that distinction in experience. Um, not super important, but just a notable difference. Um, the other thing that's really important in this is the ability to change the name, drawer, and document type within the document viewer. Previously, you could only do the index keys and custom properties. Um, with this latest update, you can now um, re-index any of the metadata um, on a document. Um, but just note that this is still driven by workflow queue um, configuration security. So deciding what users or groups have the ability to access which fields on a document is still driven uh, through configuration of the workflow queue itself. Um, the other update uh, to the document viewer module is um, the context actions on the mobile interface. Um, they've been redesigned to be more um, contextually aware of where you're at in the mobile app. So for example, on these screenshots here, um, on the left side we have when you had a document open in the mobile viewer, you could see the context menu has um, all the different actions that you would be using when you have a, you're viewing an image of a document. Um, so downloading that for, for an email, putting on hold, uh, printing the document, uh, if you're opening the document within workflow, routing it forward. Versus if you're outside of the document viewer and you're just in a workflow view, um, you know, the context options are, are more limited and only have the route forward um, and route back capabilities. Um, on the workflow viewing screen, there's been some updates to the toolbars to provide um, some more actions that were previously only available in the document viewer, you know, making better usability um, for um, perceptive experience. Um, and private and public workflow filters are also added onto workflows, so not only document views, but workflows also. And you can run workflow process views um, also now. Um, just a few additional details that we want to go over as it relates to upgrading to 7.2.3 and, and Content Apps 2.4. Um, you have to go to 7.2.3 to use this latest version of Content Apps. Um, private filters and views, um, you still have to create those in the ImageNow client. Uh, once they're creating the client, they will show in perceptive experience. Um, the re-index capability, as I said before, is still governed by, um, even though it's available, still has to be available in the workflow queue configuration. Um, as far as emailing documents out of perceptive experience, you still have to download the document and manually attach. There is no direct open, opening of the email client's email, uh, a file attachment. Um, and all versions of the latest e APE form are able to be used with the perceptive experience client. All right, and a few more details before we wrap up here. The Perceptive Content uh, Desktop Client 7.2.2 can be used with the Perceptive Content Application Server 7.2.3 components. However, uh, you will be missing the email experience links functionality. Um, anonymous user query parameters uh, are supported in Perceptive Experience. It's not recommended uh, for use due to inability to drive security, though. Um, WebNow has no sunset date. However, the focus is growing on the experience platform. Um, folders are still not available in experience as of Content Apps 2.4, but the feature is on the 2019 roadmap. Um, OEL, OLE annotation type will not be supported in experience uh, due to technology limitations, and um, learn modes are uh, not on the roadmap for perceptive experience. Uh, in the future due to uh, further technology limitations. However, stick around for our next webinar uh, for a different solution to that same type of functionality. Um, so this concludes our, our presentation. Uh, appreciate you guys taking the time to join us. We're going to open the floor for, for questions here um, for anything that we didn't cover. Thanks, guys. Um, one question is, can you talk a little, uh, and feel free, any attendees, use the uh, questions pane inside the GoToWebinar window to submit questions. Um, one question is, can you talk a little, a little bit about the perceptive uh, and experience roadmap? So Highland has committed to the perceptive experience platform. Um, they've 
even before the acquisition, um, they were definitely was the focus of ImageNow was to get that, that modern HTML5 web client and Highland has continued to elaborate on that roadmap. Um, there are roadmaps released for the future of, of the features and those can be um, you know, through your, your Highland uh, account rep, those um, roadmaps can be shared. Um, thank you. Another question, um, just to clarify, the um, patches with the learn mode enhancements do not require me to upgrade to 7.2.3? That's correct. Um, those specific patch builds of version 7.1.5 and 7.2.2 .2 um, can be used to take advantage of the new learn mode functionality. Um, okay, looks like that's it. Okay. Oh. Um, will RPI be a community live conference next week? RPI, we have uh, John Marney, our, our solution delivery manager, and we have Jim Fall, one of our senior account executives, who will be at Community Live um, next week. Yep, just shoot us an email if you want to uh, set up some time to chat. All right, thank you all for all the great questions. Uh, we reviewed these topics at very high levels, so if there are any topics that we didn't cover, items you'd like us to dive in greater in detail, please let us know for future webinars. If you visit our webinars page, you can register for upcoming webinars, and you can also watch recordings from all the past webinars. Uh, you can also visit our knowledge base, which has a lot of great content, including free white papers, case studies, product demos, and help articles. Uh, thank you for dialing in, and we hope to hear from you soon.